<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and today in the shop, I'm doing a mystery box opening. Now, I don't know what's underneath of this box. All I know is that something that Devin has gotten for the shop, so that might be something we can use. He also said it might be slightly ridiculous, so I'm not exactly sure, but we'll open it up, we'll check it out, and maybe do a kind of a mini review of it. All right, it's a, a small box inside of a big box. A little white box, some plastic, all right. Not super, super heavy. Has a little bit of weight to it, but not much. All right. Any guesses before you open it? There's something in the middle that has a little bit more depth to it. No. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I have no idea. Nope, there's so many things. I mean, inside of a box like this, there could be like some type of drill bit type thing, some type of um, burr. It could be something to like a little clamp or something. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the little things I had like this in the shop that were that are usable. So I don't know. Let's see. Nope. Oh, all right. It looks like maybe little knives. Here's some ball chain, which I'm assuming maybe means it's little neck knives. There's something to maybe put around your neck. So we got some ball chain. That's what that's called, right? Ball chain, something like that. So we had little teeny knives with sheaths with snaps. <laughs> um, looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six total. Three with black handles, three with wood handles. It's like different types of wood, which is kind of nice. Little, uh, uh, what's it called, lanyard holes on them, which is fun. Uh, different size handles. These are pretty, little black handles. All right, let's open one up. So this is a black one. Um, has brass fittings, looks like, you know, regular type of steel. Black leather sheath with a little snap. Is it real leather or pleather? Yeah. Uh, it's hard to tell. It looks like maybe real leather. I gotta look at maybe the inside. So there's the black uh, faux leather sheath. Kind of nice texture on the outside. It's, it's a nice faux leather. And a nice snap on it. Okay stitching. You know, not super, super tight, but that's good. Um, and like I said, it's kind of fuzzy on the inside. So that's what you know leads me to believe that it's not real leather. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. All right, so this is a bottle opener on the back of kind of a butcher knife, chopper knife. Yeah. It has a, what looks like a convex grind um, up to a secondary bevel, which is nice. It feels like it's not super sharp, but not dull. Like it has a little bit of, you know, sharpness to it. That's cool. I mean, and as far as I can tell, it's made exactly like any other knife. So you have a full tang with a brass pin here, um, a brass lanyard tube, a little, some type of dark wood, which is nice. Mini cleaver, that was the word I was looking for. So there's one. We got a little black handled cleaver. And let's take out, take, open up one of the brown ones. Oh, this is a little mini Damascus cleaver. That's cool. Now in the description, they're all supposed to be Damascus. Oh, okay. Well, this one is not, as far as I can tell, unless it just wasn't etched, but usually you can see something. So that one is. There's a little, that's great, a little Damascus cleaver. <laughs> it's so tiny. It's, this one is not as sharp as the other one. All right, let's take this one. This one looks like it has a little bit different profile, which is kind of cool. So it's like the different uh, sheaths are hinting at different profiles. Whoa, a little battle axe guy, right? It's a little Damascus battle axe knife. That one's sharper. That one's pretty, that, that one's pretty decently sharp compared to the other two. <laughs> that one's a little bit, a little bit clunkier handle. It's kind of wide, but, uh, 
still pretty cool. They um, they finish the handles pretty nicely. I mean, the the surface isn't great here, but the the outside surface is nice. Feels like it's been maybe polished or buffed or something. Uh, Can you guess the next <laughs> knife by its? Uh, I feel sure. Let's see. okay. So we have two cleavers. We have a little battle axe type guy, full tang battle axe. This one feels like a little. Kind of chef's knife, mm, yeah, kind of a rounded belly chef's knife type thing, also hinted at by the shape of the sheath. <laughs> That's great. This is the the first one that has a like has plunge lines, so the the grind starts here and comes up. The other ones, the grind is the whole surface, so. Those are pretty nice. Plunge lines are pretty decent. It's got a little bit of an edge to it. These are great. It's kind of it kind of reminds me of something that we've thought about doing in our videos is using scraps and leftovers and selling them or giving them away as little tchotchkes or things. If you guys are interested in that, let us know in the comments. But uh, I can imagine someone who makes Damascus or does knives or something has all these little bits lying around. Right. So let me make these little. That's great. <laughs> keychain knives. Yeah, a little keychain. Those are cool. I got two more. This one feels like maybe another cleaver type thing. Yep. Let's see. Yep. So that's similar to the first and second one. A nice shape. I really like this black handle. It looks like it has some type of color to it. So maybe it's. Um, some type of African blackwood or something. This one is pretty sharp. Or they just stained nice. all the wood different. Maybe. I, who, I like mean, it's... who knows? Maybe they make a bunch. Yeah, Maybe I mean, again, just... it could be cutoffs from... All you need is a tiny little cutoff, so it could right. be all sorts of fun exotic woods. I mean, these are all different so far. Looks like maybe cherry and... Mm, maybe a bubinga or something. These are great little, little knives. These are really fun so far. Very happy. This is a cool unboxing. Whoop. Throwing all of them. Another one. All right, this one feels like it might be a Santuco style or a, um, what's the, uh, like a, a Giotto style with a crop point. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so it's it's kind of the similar to the standard cleaver style, but just a little bit more tip. This is actually really nice. This one, I think actually so far, and this one is not Damascus. Again, unless it was uh, not been etched, but doesn't look like it usually. Like I said, you can see some patterning in it, but I really like, so far this one I think seems like the most usable out of um, the ones that are here. Because they're so small, that you almost can't get your finger on them to use them. Not that you would have to use it that way, but like because this has more room here, because it's tipped forward, it's actually kind of nice. I really like the shape of that. That's really nice. Um, they say it's a, uh, they're EDCs. Okay, right. I mean, I guess they are little... their keychains, you know. Yeah, and they have the right keychain, so yeah, maybe it's just a, I mean, it seemed like it was pretty good. It was held in place pretty well, like a positive hold inside the sheath. Take a um, guess at the price. Um, let's see. For six little teeny knives, a hundred dollars. Oh, hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I was like thinking, you know, how much per one. So if you're gonna buy one from, you know, like trade show or something, you know, maybe. Twenty dollars or something, so that would actually put it at six of them, would be one hundred and twenty dollars. So I actually went down some. So. Well, what do you think I'd pay for it? Forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's like it depends also because you can buy, you can buy Damascus, which technically is patterned, you know, forge welded for you know they come in. 
twenty dollar knives. You know, you can. So it kind of depends on where they come from. So, if this was like someone like off of Etsy who's in the states and selling, and who's a knife maker and selling these little, as a little side thing, like they might be for a little bit more expensive. Like if I was gonna say, if I were gonna make these and sell these, I would sell them for at least twenty dollars. Oh yeah, but these are this is Amazon bought. Okay. So I'm sure some type of Chinese made, Amazon bought. I mean, it comes, it's nice it comes with little sheaves. Yeah. And it looks like, the you know, it's not, I'm sure it's not. No, I mean, I think it's, it's... Etched something. I don't know if it's layers of... Yeah, maybe not. You know? I don't think it would be. Well, the price is fifteen ninety nine. <laughs> nice. With, you can also, as of now, you can apply a 5% coupon. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so drop you... it down. <laughs> Get another uh, $3 <laughs> off or whatever. And you got a steal. Amazing mini chef knife can easily slice through plastic packaging, letter, seal tape, even strapping tape. It can be used to cut meat, vegetables, or fruit anytime, <laughs> anywhere. And they can also be used as beer bottle openers. <laughs> At least the one can. <laughs> I guess technically you could use any of them. I was like, the designs are cool. I really like the design of this one. It's. It kind of has the aesthetic that I like, kind of a, a long, you know, dropping point that comes down and then a Santuco style. Like, that's really cool. That could be something that you technically keep on a keychain. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a, it's a pretty solid snap. Like, that's not something that's going to, like, it's, a, it's holding in there pretty well. I would, I would be comfortable putting this on a keychain and not, and the sheath not come off. It's it's a good positive snap that holds the sheath on. I feel like it's pretty good protecting. It's a fun little thing. This is something that I would like to you know keep in my car, you know, or hanging from the rearview mirror or something like that. Like I actually have a little neck knife that I made from one of our earlier videos that's hanging in my car. But that, yeah, no, that's cool. I think it's really fun. Oh no, no, it's just barely big enough. Okay, so that's the small one. So that one fits. So yeah, they all fit. High quality 3CR13 laser textured stainless steel. Okay. So it is laser. laser. Yeah. yeah, as I look at it more, it, I can tell because there's some grinding uh, lines that are on the bevels that are not in the Damascus or not in the pattern, right? So that means that they've been kind of, yeah, etched afterward, laser etched. All right. A couple baby carrots here and a Guinness bottle to test this out. I did think on the way up, the orientation of the bottle opener on this blade will make it a little tricky. Because it's here, so you have to kind of, I guess, mm -hmm. like I would think it would be better if it were flipped the other way around. So you could kind of grab it like that and lift up. So I'm pulling up on the handle. This way I'm going to have to kind of... Put your hand on the blade. You, you yeah, slip, you... yeah. You put your hand on the blade. I guess I push down. I guess that's okay. Let's see. So hook underneath. Yeah, I got that. I have to push up with my thumb here. Ah. It worked. But yeah, again, if you know, if this was the other way around, it could be hooked and then lifted and pulled off. I think that would be better. It was effective. I have, oh, let's see. This is a bottle opener keychain from Brian Cone, B Cone Knives, that actually Devin and I both have. Thank you, Brian. This one is a good example of that, right? So if it were this way, as opposed to this way, this comes in and you can lift up and push away from you, um, as opposed to this one, which is like pulling back. So, you know, I'd rather it be this way with the handle over here. So that works. All right, let's, uh... yep, works. <laughs> so there's our different tools of the trade. And let's see, so. Which one's the sharpest? The ax might actually be the sharpest. This guy's okay. The little kind of chef knife. This is pretty dull. This one is. Pretty dull. This one's a little bit sharper. Yeah, so this like is the sharpest one. Yeah, they're sharpest. Against one that I sharpen up. Yeah, quick, a quick sharpen. So I really like this one, so maybe I'll sharpen this one real quick. 
I'm just gonna use a 220 because they all have they all have a secondary bevel ground on them already or micro bevel. So this will just clean it up a little bit and sharpen it up. I think I'll probably just use that. Um, I have, actually I have a, a mini strop belt for my one by 30. So maybe I'll show you guys that, that's kind of cool. This is my one by 30 that I used for years to make knives and I was really happy with the way it worked. Um, did a lot of great knives off of it and I have a lot of belts left over for it so I never had the heart to get rid of it. But the one thing I have used consistently with it is to do the finished sharpening on a lot of knives and I usually would work with an old belt that was flipped over on the paper side and it puts a polishing compound. And just recently picked up this which is a leather belt for the one by 30 was about $20 on Amazon and it works beautifully. This is our newly sharpened one, which is nice and sharp now. This is pretty much to the sharpness that I would sharpen my own kitchen knives. Uh, you know, working tool that you're going to resharpen often. So we'll start with the dullest and do a little, a little carrot cut, some baby carrots. Yeah, that's pretty dull. So it's kind of cutting, but also just tearing. I mean, it's also the thickness of these in this little cut, little chef's knife. This one feels a little nicer. These are kind of, there's not a lot of cutting going on. It's not a lot of scoring. It's mostly just a push cut, which is okay. Um, just because of how small they are. All right now let's, we'll try the battle ax, which is the sharpest one. Yeah, I can, I can feel it. it's a little bit nicer. It's, I would say it's not, doesn't feel a ton sharper, although this is, it seems like it's a thinner piece of steel than these other two. Um, works okay. One that I sharpened. Oh yeah. Well, that's much better even with just a push straight through chops well so they can sharpen they're pretty nice these are really fun um these are definitely something that i would buy again although i didn't buy these these are they're they're a cool novelty you know for for what it is um a tiny little knife if it was my choice i would choose the ones that were not Damascus patterned because it's not real Damascus. So you might as well just have the regular uh, plain mono steel, unless it's real Damascus. If this is something that you make Damascus or have Damascus, you want to make little keychain giveaways or things that you can sell. That would be cool if it was real. As far as its usefulness, I mean, it's, I wouldn't really use it in the kitchen for anything. I'm not going to cut up anything with this in my kitchen. If I needed to cut something that was this small, um, I can't think of a time that I would need to cut something with a little teeny blade. Other than, you know, normal day-to-day -day stuff. If I was going to open a box, you know, having this around is kind of cool. Pick it up and use it. It's a fun novelty thing. It, it would be fun to use because of how small it is. Um, just for that. It is like kind of pick it up and cut something with it. I think that's great. So is it worth the $16? Oh, yeah. I definitely think it's worth $16. I mean, just for the amount of like fun that I had opening and looking at them, that was worth $16. How about an official, ridiculous, <laughs> kind of silly unboxing score for as, as a uh, set of items? Maybe one, one out of 10? Yeah, um, I would say maybe seven out of 10. 
because I think they have a use other than just novelty. Like you could actually use them. The handles are nice. They, they're pretty nicely ground. There's not a ton of like tool marks in them. So overall, they're pretty nice. Um, the sheaths, not super high quality, but the snaps are really nice um, and they do hold the blade secure inside. So yeah, I think a seven out of 10. Well, that's it guys. This is, this is really fun. Um, I, I really liked opening, you know, this and the, honestly, I've never opened this before, before I took it off. I had no, no idea what was in here. Uh, if that's something that you guys like, and that's kind of interesting to you, let us know in the comments down below, because these are kind of fun videos we like to sprinkle in now and again, or if there's something that you think might be interesting for me to open in the shop and you want to see my reaction, reach out to Devin and you can reach out to him on Instagram at the art of camera guy directly. Um, if you send us an email to the art of craftsmanship, it's going to come to both of us. So if that's the only way you can reach us, just make sure you put something that says Devin open only. So if you want it to be a surprise for me, you can reach out to Devin. Patreon as well, if you want to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com forward slash craftsmanship. Other than that, thank you guys so much. This has been fun. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.